something a little bit different today, but the timing is opportune because thank you very much, Penny Lane, for your request on how am I boxing up, how do I box up my orchids for shipping. Coincidentally, I have one here, too, as a matter of fact, because I have a double Phalaenopsis Leodora Sweet Memory, and I have a Vanda cutting from my previous downsizing of my Vandas. And here we are. Might as well film it, no, Penny? Don't get any funny ideas, but uh, thank you for your request, and thank you so much, everybody, for watching. If you've clicked on this video, welcome. I appreciate having you here. And the first thing I do, 24 hours before departure, is just wipe the leaves down with an insecticide. There are no pests on here at all, but it doesn't hurt in case something might have just laid its eggs on the leaves and just would like to hatch in the meantime and become a stowaway. So I wipe the leaves down, clean them up, and it's a nice breezy day today, which will help in the process of drying the orchid out. I have protective moss here because of my lack of humidity in my climate. So in order to encourage roots to grow down into the media instead of burning out on the dry top layer that I do experience, I put moss over the top and I shall now remove that. Because the next step is to help her along, to reduce the stress as much as possible, and hopefully save some flowers for the new recipient, I am going to fill her up with, I have in here 150 parts per million of calcium magnesium and a good dollop of seaweed at 5.8. And the reason my pH is that low is because my LECA is used to, brings it around to eight. So for the hour that I'm gonna soak this sweet memory for, I would like to at least have the LECA balance out the lower pH, and then with that, come up to maybe 6.1, 6.2. Get a little bit of strength into the orchid prior to her trip. A little bit of calcium, magnesium, and seaweed. 24 hours before departure. Farewell cocktail going in all the way to the top. Avoiding as much as possible of the rhizome, but really getting that pot full. And then for an hour, she can soak in that, which is perfect because when we take her out of the pot later, that the roots will be a little bit more pliable. Besides, in my language, she has had some chakula, which is Swahili for food. So <laughs> a little bit of nutrients and an hour soak, and we will be back. Right, 23 hours before departure, let's get her out. She has soaked and let's see what we are up against. On top of that, now she needs to dry out as best as possible. I do not want to send a wet orchid in the mail, even though it is summer. So let's have a look. I normally do not stake my spikes at all but these were growing in the opposite direction and I didn't want it to occupy such a big space. And for that reason, I did put a support in. But normally, I try to use the direction of the light to train the spikes to come in one direction. Then I have a little bit more wall space in the back. I have a gorgeous growing root tip here that I do not want to compromise. So I'll be back, I need a knife, something sharp. It's tucked in there, and I'm surprised it didn't come off from the soaking. Now, I can't show you this because it's kind of deep. There we go. I did it. Woohoo! Gosh, so nerve-wracking. 
So nerve wracking. All right, let's tip her. And keep squeezing. Okay, what have we got? Growing tips and some compromised roots, which I will clean up. Can I get this support out or do I cut it? I better cut it. Stop playing. It's not going to be used anymore anyway. Hmm. Let's have a look some really nice ones in there and there are some compromised ones in there. Just make sure that I don't break any spikes and I get this. <laughs> it tried to grow into the tape. <laughs> okay. Yes, there's a little bit of work to be done. So I'm going to make my life a little easier and not have to flush so much that lecker in keeping the old and dead roots away from it. The lecker that wants to stay on, stays on. What comes off, I'm not going to force anything to come off. Now oh, there is a dead part there. That one is brown, but it's firm. Very dead. So we won't be sending that. And I take it back to, in this case, not to the green. I'm going to let the new owner decide for herself. I don't want to impose any infections while it's traveling. If I was to repot it, then I would go back all the way to the green. In this case, I'm just protecting what is alive by taking off the part that is dead and not exposing any new fresh tissue. So that's a difference between potting her up for my purposes as opposed to shipping. So the new owner can then decide what she wants to do and I do not open it to any kind of possible attacks in the box because you know packing material is not sterile so some brown ends will remain so we have some growing tips that is compromised up there but I'm going to leave it the ones down here I'm just going to take off the old vellum in instead of fiddling with her too much just take off what is old and decayed at the base here. But other than that, we are good to go. Some nice growing tips there. And this is all new as well and branching. So now all that's left to do is wait. I'm going to have her in a very shady place no risk of sun at all especially also because I have her on with a I had wiped her with that insecticide so I have a little drying tray here and I shall hang her in the shade so that the air and the breeze can dry her out before we pack her up however while sweet memory dries up I have another little little, well, sort of little orchid to pack up. Somebody was so kind as to want the bottom piece of my Banda Denisoniana dark chocolate. Sorry, it's a bit breezy. I hope the flap doesn't keep blowing over. 
And I was so touched because in the video, I did say I was going to throw her away because I don't have the space. And then I didn't have the heart. <laughs> I couldn't because, you know, orchids will try. They will try because, oh gosh, I hope you can see this. But I have on one side, there are three nodes coming. One, two, three, maybe four, I don't know. There's a bulge up here as well. It's a bit brown, but you know. And on the other side, there are also three. One, two, three. I just couldn't, I couldn't throw her away. Now the roots, they are viable. So I have this Amazon box that I have kept. And I was gonna say, I've already mentioned that I may cut back some roots to fit into the box, but the whole piece can fit. She has been lying in water, like a little pool of water on a tote bag lid, which was upside down and creates a hollow. So she was resting in there and overnight soaking in the Vander bucket. And I've already trimmed roots back that I thought were dead and some were but I then started going into green and I'm like okay I'm gonna stop so I'm going to pack up this vanda as well in this video and show a different way of doing so protecting her from jostling around and first of all I'm going to cut some strips of my Bob material, not much, because there's not really that much to do here, except protect her from moving around in the box. It's windy, <laughs> gonna be interesting. I might be chasing fluff off into the opposite direction here. So, in order not to tape the stem, I'm going to put fluff onto the tape. Let's double it up so that the tape doesn't stick through. This is a bit fiddly with the wind here. And then so the tape doesn't touch the stem and the fluff protects the sticky of the tape, I tape the stem onto the box. Like that. So the stem is securing itself on the box with tape, but not touching and affecting anything that will could possibly just be, you know, the tape would rip off when it gets unpacked. So this is um, one of the things I did a long time ago and it seemed to work really well. And here I am doing it again. Okay, that root, let go of my bracelet. That root would touch. So unfold it a bit, measure, and tape down. And I also only box like a day before shipping. So it's kind of like waiting for D-Day, you know? I don't do it ahead of time or in advance. I don't like to do it on the same day either because if I encounter some kind of difficulty, I want to have time to sort it out as opposed to being stressed that now I have to go to the mail. And um, yeah, look at that. I don't have to cut any more off. This can fit up here, but we have to do a little bit more to say thank you to the new owner. Can't just send her like this. It might just look like a piece of stem with roots. 
but it is an orchid and she made me very happy for a very long time. So, all respect. Yeah, work with silk paper on a windy day. Good one. This looks much nicer when the new owner opens the box. And that would be it packed up. Now, in here goes a label. I just wanted to show the packing process. There goes a label. There's also going to be a little letter, a note of some sort. And then of course, once it's closed up, the address, etc., etc. But this is how I think she is going to arrive super safe, no issues. Another thing I also do is if I reuse boxes, I mark out the barcodes, take off obviously stickers, but the barcodes because I don't want there to be any confusion in shipping. So I'm going to Sharpie, black Sharpie, all the barcodes in case, in case they still, you know, as they zip through the conveyor belt, I don't know, but, and they read the code. I don't want this to get lost in the mail. Um, despite tracking and all that. But yeah, there you go. Super duper recycled, but um, label and a note goes in here. And then there will be the address on top. So that is the Vanda stem wrapped up, secured in the box. Not quite ready to go, but that is how I do it. Alrighty, we have been a couple of hours in the shade, in the breeze and the roots are nicely dried off. And now let's get into the nitty gritty. The breeze has subsided a little bit, which is helpful. Not quite sure with the gusts though, but we'll give it a go. So the idea is to lay the orchid in such a way that we don't damage the leaves, but also manage to fit her in a box that is also conducive with a reasonable size based on shipping cost. So I normally start at the bottom so as not to create too much tension and wrap the roots into a little more of a cone shape. And this is slippery stuff. Tape and breeze. This is gonna be fun. But once you get the first one in, that is the most important. The rest is now just securing her in this ball as best as possible and securing the spikes. Okay, let's look at the box. Verify our size. How much stress do we put the orchid under? Do we have to put her under much stress? Because if not, the least the better. And this is perfect. You can see that I'm not going to have to do much stress on the spike at all. I hope you can see that. It is late in the afternoon but I need to get this done now. So that's great to know. I have plenty of space. Everything from now on is just logistics. Let's see if we can protect the blooms so that the new owner can at least enjoy something. No guarantees when it comes to shipping. One is already starting to fail, but let's give it a go. very, very slightly. The box is big enough 
and that makes our life much easier. Sometimes it's nice to keep the shipping costs down simply because you can fit more into a box, but I can tell you that on arrival, that little bit of extra size will actually work in the favor of the joy of receiving an orchid intact. Okay, I'm not going to fuss too much with the spikes because I have space, but I do want to bring her in just a touch more. So that in the box, when I secure her, it'll also be easier to do so. There we go. That's all I'm going to do. Right, seeing as there's a lot of plastic, a little air circulation is not a bad idea. Now, let's snazz her up a bit. Let's give her the X Factor. She has been so good to me. Little bit of TLC as a thank you. Goes a long way. There we go, look at that. Orchid heaven. We're not done yet. All right, let's do this. And um, this is how I ship my orchids. This is not just because I'm filming it. Where possible, where the orchid allows it. They get what I can give them on the way out of my collection. And I think this is a pretty way of receiving an orchid. It just adds to everything, in my opinion. Not talking very much, am I? <laughs> I'll find some nice piece of music to enjoy while I'm doing this. Some things I just have to concentrate on because every, every part is different. And then my, my head needs to, can't do two things at once. <laughs> Very embarrassing, but here we are. There's that. 
And now, so as not to rip the paper, I'm going to put some padding inside so that I can touch the sides of the orchid with the plastic. And in that way, lock her in to the box. If I had more orchids, I would start playing Tetris. But with one, I pretty much taper into the sides of the box. Now, it might look like the plastic is going to move, but it won't. Not when I'm done with it. So I press on the outer side of the plastic, starting bit by bit to wedge the package of the orchids itself into place. It might appear to be a little bit exaggerated, but it's not. It's not when it comes to the health of receiving an orchid. It's not at all exaggerated. I have received so many broken and damaged orchids and it's absolutely unnecessary. I don't want it to happen to one of mine and I certainly don't want the receiver of my orchids to be disappointed and get that gut feeling, that horrible gut feeling like, oh, you anticipate an orchid, you're looking forward to it, and then it comes snapped or broken. But this works wonders. And now I could fill around with fluff, etc., but I don't need to. She is in there solid. Upside down. She's fine. The only thing I have no control over is how the mailman is going to handle the box. That's the only thing I don't have any control over. So, just one little piece of protection. And same as with the Vanda, there will be a note inside here. And then we'll just fold her up, label on, and off she goes. And yes, um, that is how I pack my orchids. In this case, two individual ones. But in other cases, of course, they'll fit a little bit more Tetris-like. But I always watch the leaves. I always watch spikes. I always dry out the roots. I always apply a bit of cow and seaweed for an hour and then let it dry out. Um, I always try to wrap it up in silk paper with a ribbon and I always make a label. And um, I always keep my fingers crossed that she arrives safely or in this case they arrive safely and that um, the new owners are going to have a lot of joy. One, trying to grow on a stem and to get keikis which I appreciate, and here we are with sweet memory. And I have to say, she has given me a lot of sweet memories, but now it's somebody else's turn, and I'm very, very happy that I can do this. So it was a little bit of a detached video, but thank you everybody so much for watching. If you've tuned in and you've stayed this far, I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.